blessing to you. Pray and hope you're doing well. Pray and hope your family is doing well also. Today we're going to be talking about omission and commission. Sins of omission and sins of commission. Now there are two basic ways we sin against God Almighty. The sin of omission and the sin of commission. So what are sins of omission and commission? First we're going to look at the definition of the word omission and commission. The Cambridge Dictionary definition of the word omission said, the act of not including something or someone that should have been included, or something or someone that have not been included that should have been. Now this is not doing something that should have been done. Just imagine if you read a book, you know the book uh, back and front. No one can tell you anything about this book because you know the book very well. And then you hear someone talking about the book and they leave out very important details about the book. Or they add something that you know don't belong in the detail of the book. That is uh, omission, that they are taking something away or they are adding something that doesn't belong. Now the Bible also warns us not to do, do that. It said, do not add to this or take away from anything from this book. Now when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2 from the New King James, it said, You should not add to the words which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Revelation 22 verse 18 and 19 from the New King James said, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to, to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, <clears throat> from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. We can see this happening in the different translation of the Bible. Some things are being added and some things are being taken away to fit the narrative of one agenda. So omission is to include or exclude something or someone from the equation. We sin when we take God Almighty from our life and add something else in His place. Nothing should replace, uh, take the place of God. We should not put anything in the place of God. We should not add to His word or we should not take away from His word. When we do so, we are committing sin of omission. Now let us see what the Cambridge Dictionary say about commission. And it said, to formally choose someone to do a special piece of work or to formally ask for a special piece of work from someone. Now as children of God, we are given specific work to do and to keep the commandment of the Lord God. First Peter 2 and verse 9 from the New Living Translation uh, from the New King James, pardon me. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are called to give God praise, to tell of his goodness, to tell of his mercy, to tell of all that he has done for us. We should never fail to tell of God's goodness. We should never fail to tell of what He has done for us. God save us, we should tell of that. Let us be a living testimony to others who may not know God. Let us proclaim the praises of God. Let us proclaim His goodness. Let us proclaim His holiness, His righteousness, His justice, and also His wrath. We are to tell of God goodness. We have to tell of all the things that He have done for us. Let us testify of who God is. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4 and 5 said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 12 said, And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God 
by walking in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. Matthew 22 and verse 37, Jesus said to him, you, should, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Jesus said this after he was asked, which is the greatest commandment. Now, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 said, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God had called us. God had ordained us. God had given us a commandment to do. We are to do as he commanded, commanded us, to love him, to serve him, to fear him. We are to walk in fear of who God is. We are to love him. We are to uh, just walk in obedience to who God is. We are to do all things in obedience to God by his grace with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Who is going to lead us? The Holy Spirit. God commissioned us to walk in his authority that he had given to us and thereby fulfilling all that he had asked us to do. And when we don't, it is a sin. Sin of commission. Let us be obedient to the word of God and do not go against the word of God, but walk according to how he had commanded us to walk. So there we have the definition of omission and commission. Uh, with some scripture uh, included. Now, let us see what the Bible has to say about the sins of omission and the sins of commission. James chapter 4 and verse 17 tells us, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. When we fail to do the things that the Word of God teaches us to do, it is a sin of omission. Like if we show hate instead of love. When throughout the Bible it commands us to love. Matthew 5 and verse 43 to 48 said from the New King James said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise and the evil and, and the good, and send rain on the just and, 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 and on the unjust. For if we love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collector do the same? And if you greet, do, greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collector do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So for us to be walk in perfectness of who God is, we are to love those who hate us. We are to uh, pray for those who persecute us, despitefully use us. Uh, we have to pray for them. We have to show love at all times. It doesn't matter what anyone tries to do to us, but we must show who God is in our life by walking according to his word and live our life according to his word words luke 6 and verse 27 to 28 said but i say to you who hear love your enemy do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you and pray for those who spite spitefully use you luke 6 and verse 35 but love your enemy do good and lend hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is king to the unthankful and evil. So here we have the word is saying for us to lend to those who in need. Lend to those who need and look for nothing in return. So when we lend, we should lend without even looking for anything in return. Because our re reward will be in heaven. We will get a great reward in heaven. So if someone borrows something, don't look for it back in return if you don't need it. But just let it go and know that God will bless you in return. Jesus tell us to love thy neighbor as thyself. As it, was, as it was asked of him, who is my neighbor? Now when we read the story in Luke chapter 10 verse 
uh, from verse 25 to verse 20, 37. We can read the, the parable of the, the Good Samaritan. From verse 30, we will see Jesus telling the story of a man that was traveling from one place to the other. And when he, he was attacked by robbers, beaten and left to die. In the story, Jesus said that there was a priest who was coming, going the same way, going down the road. And when he saw the man, what did he do? He passed on the other side of the road. Now, here we have a priest, a man of God, someone that should be willing to help those who are in need of help, but fail to do so. Sins of omission. He failed to do the right thing when he know the right thing. When we fail to do the right thing, after we know that is the right thing, it is a sin of omission. Just imagine a doctor or a nurse uh, driving on a highway and there's an accident and they know that they're supposed to stop and help, but they continue to drive. That is sin of omission. They have a responsibility to stop and to help uh, those in need not to continue driving as nothing is happening. And basically that's what this priest did when he saw the man that was beaten and left to die. He just passed on the other side of the road and as if nothing happened. Now, Jesus continued and said, Next, a Levi came by the same place, saw the man, and likewise passed by on the other side of the road. Now, a Levi was someone that was given a special religious function to do in the temple of God. They were a lesser class of priests. He know better, but failed to do better. Sins of omission. Then we have the Samaritan who came by, saw the man, and have compassion on him and help him. That's all Jesus is asking us for, us for us to do, is to have compassion, to help those who are in trouble, to help those who need help. Let us not just walk by and see someone in need and don't help, don't have compassion. We are to show compassion at all times. Luke 10 from verse 30 to verse 37 as I read the New King James. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levi, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he, he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged him his wound, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who show mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. So here we have Jesus is saying for us to do likewise, for us to show mercy and have compassion on those that we see are going through. Jeremiah 11 verse 8 said, Yet they obey not, nor incline their ears, but walk everyone in his imagination of this, in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I command them to do, but they did not they did them not. So when we fail to do what God commands us to do, we are going to be punished. We are going to be judged by God. Not by man, but by God. Because we are not obeying the word of God. So here we have someone who showed compassion. A Samaritan. Someone that didn't have to do it. Uh, probably didn't, uh, we didn't expect to do it. But he's the one who show compassion. So let us show compassion to those who are in need. We are to show love and compassion to all who are in need, especially if we call ourselves Christian, Christ like. If we are Christ like, we must show compassion. We must show love. We must show mercy. If we know better, we must do better. We cannot act like we don't know better. 
we do know better because if we are reading the Word of God, the Word of God is there to instruct us, to correct us, to show us the right way, how to live and how to behave ourselves. So let us act according to the Word of God. Let us not fail to do what is right in the sight of God. For when we fail to do what God tells us to do, are the things that we know is right and don't do them, then we are committing sins of omission. The Bible is a book of righteousness and justice. And if we are not fulfilling or walking in the right or straight path of God's word, then we are committing sins of omission. Let us not continue to commit uh, sins of omission. There are many more that could be said about sins of omission. But I will just stop here. And now let us look at what the Bible says about the sins of commission. Sins of commission is the sin we take action to commit. Let us look at Romans 7 verse 14 to verse 20 NIV. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that for I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin liveth in me that does it. This is Paul speaking, that when he wants to do good, he finds himself doing the things that he should not be doing. Now, have we ever found ourselves in that situation knowing we're supposed to be doing good but yet find ourselves doing the things that we are not to do? We are not to do. Like lying, cheating, and stealing, and many others that we know is wrong, but we continue to do them. The Bible warns us that we are not to do these things. They are against, they go against everything that is holy and righteous before God. God is a righteous God, He is a holy God. And he commands us not to do these things. But if we continue to do them, even when we know that they're wrong, it is sin. It is a sin. Sin of commission. So let us not continue to continue commit in these type of sin. When we look at the Ten Commandments of God and go against them, we are committing sins of commission. And also you will find the sins of omission in the Ten Commandments as well. The, con the Ten Commandments is as follows. You shall have no other gods before me. We shall not have any other god. No one should take the place of God. Nothing should take the place of God. We should not set up any other god but the only true and living God, Jehovah. Number two, it says, You shall not make any idols. Do not bow down to anything that is not God. Who is not God? Jehovah. Three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Many times we hear people using uh, OMG, taking the name of God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. How many of us dishonor in our parents? Let us honor our parents. He didn't say if they were good or bad. He said, honor your father and your mother. So let us walk in obedience to the word of God. Number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not be a false witness against your neighbor. And number ten, you shall not covet. When we look at these, many of these, many of us have committed. Many of us have broken the Ten Commandments. And if we break one, basically we are committing all, breaking all. Now when we look at King David and the thing that he did to Uriah, we can see the sin of commission all over it. First, he committed adultery. Seeing beautiful Bathsheba taking a bath on and and the rooftop across from where he was as he walked on his rooftop. He asked one of his servants who she was and it was told him that she was the wife of one of his mighty men, uh, Uriah, the Hittites. And what did he do? 
he sent for her for her to be for her to come to him and after she came to him he slept with her got her pregnant and after he found out that she was pregnant he tried to cover it up and what did he do he sent for Uriah to come home from the war and when he came home from the war he pretended to uh, inquiring about the war uh, pretend to really care what was going on at war but he was just doing that uh, to bother him up uh, you know soften him up and send him home he told Uriah he said go home go to thy house and wash your feet now saying that is like saying go uh, you like saying go home make yourself comfortable spend time with your wife but Uriah did not do, uh, do so he slept at the door at the king's house. And when he was told him in the morning that Uriah did not go home, but he slept at the door. He got him inside again, uh, got him drunk, and sent him home for him to go home. He refused to go home, knowing that there were men at war in the open field. Uh, the people were sleeping in tent, and he refused to go home to sleep in his bed. When uh, King David found out that he did not uh, go home to sleep, and what did he do? He wrote a letter. He wrote a letter, gave it to Uriah to give to the captain of, this, of the king's army. And in the letter, he said, put Uriah at the forefront of the hardest battle and withdraw from him so that he could be killed. Now, this is just pure wickedness by King David to sleep with his man, the man's wife, got her pregnant, then tried to cover it up by sending him home so that he could sleep with his wife, and then for it uh, seemed like it was his baby and not the king's baby. But to write a letter and give it to him to give to the captain of the army for him to put him in the forefront of the hardest battle so that he could and then withdraw and then have him killed. That's just wickedness by a king. Someone who know better, but didn't do better. So we have David committing all type of sins, sins of omission and sins of commission. Now we could read this uh, story uh, in Second Samuel chapter eleven and twelve. Also, we could also read Psalm fifty-one of David, King David, repentance of this wickedness. You know, many times we are confronted by the things that we have we have done are the things that we are doing, and we fail to repent of them. But David, when he was confronted about the thing that he had done to Uriah, he went and he repent and asked for forgiveness. So we find that in Psalms 51. Now let us take a look at humanity first since, and when it started. And as you can guess, it was a sin of commission back in the beginning, Genesis. God told Adam and Eve not to eat from a certain tree. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and verse 17, New King James. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you, sh you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So Adam and Eve knew God's commandment and still disobey anyway. Genesis 3 and verse 6 said, When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Here we can see they both take action to fulfill this sinful act. You see, we all are, have tempted. We are all tempted at times from things that we see that is desirable. The temptation is not the sin. The sin is us giving into our temptation and giving into temptation by taking action to fulfill that desire. James chapter 1, verse 14 and verse 15 in New King James. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Then when desire had conceived, it gave birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, bring forth death. So when we give in to our desire, it's going to bring forth sin. And sin will bring forth death. 
Some of God's mighty leaders are those who had committed sins of commission. Abraham lied about his wife Sarah, that she was his sister. Although she was his half-sister, some might say that he did not lie. He just withheld certain information. But if we withhold important information in order to gain some personal advantage, is it not sin? Is it not lying? Genesis 12 and verse 10 to verse 13. Now there was a, a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass, when he was close to entering Egypt, that he said to, his, to Sarah his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. Sin of Commission Peter also lied when he denied knowing Jesus, even after Jesus told him that he would deny him, and he said that he would not. Matthew 26, verse 69 to 74, read as follows from the New King James. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a, certain, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied him with the oath, I do not know the man. And a little later those who stood by the camp up, came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrayed you. Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. Sin of commission. How many of us are denying Jesus Christ? When every time we are sin, every time we don't acknowledge who Jesus is, we are denying him. Sins of commission. Moses was a murderer. Exodus 2, verse 11 to 12. Now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out to his virgin and looked at their burden, and he saw and and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his virgin. So he looked this way and that way, and when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sun. Sin of commission. And when we look at the apostle Paul, who was responsible for the death of many of the believers of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that he was consenting to the death of Stephen when Stephen was being stoned, and how he went about persecuting the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. Sins of commission. But all these men and many more received forgiveness from God because they were remorseful. Are we being remorseful when we commit in sins of commission or sins of omission? Let us be remorseful in the things that we are doing when we are confronted. We all are guilty of sin of commission when we behave in ways that God had not that God had forbidden us to behave. It does not matter what sin we have committed, whether it's sin of omission or sin of commission. God is a God of forgiveness. He will forgive you as he forgive me. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1 and verse 9, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not some unrighteousness, but all unrighteousness. Once we go to God with a repenting heart, with a remorseful heart, God will forgive us. We just need to go to him and ask for forgiveness from a sincere heart. Yes, we all have sinned one way or the other, but thank God for his love and for his grace towards us. He sent his only begotten son to die a death we all deserve. Yes, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we all can, be, we all can receive forgiveness of our sins of omission and commission when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let us therefore repent as King David did when he committed adultery and murder. Psalm 51, as I read, 
Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercy, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bone you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew our steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgression your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the wall of Jerusalem, then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offering, whole burnt offering, then they shall offer bull and your altar. So here we have David repenting of the sins that he have committed. Let us therefore repent of the sins that we have committed before our holy God. Let us go before God with a broken and a contrite heart and ask God for forgiveness of our sins of omission and of our sins of commission. If we know better, let us do better. Let us walk upright before a holy and just God. Because at the end of the day, he's the one who's going to judge us. Not me, not anyone else. God is the one we're going to stand before and give an account of all the things that we have done. And if we know better, we must do better. Because we're going to give an account to God. May God bless you as I pray in Jesus' name. Eternal, most righteous and loving Father, I come before you one more time to give you praise, to give you the honor and to give you the glory. You are sovereign and I thank you, O oh God, for who you are. I thank you that you are forgiving, God. I thank you that you forgive me of my sins. God, there's many sins that I have committed, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, that you are always there when I cry out to you, O oh God, to pardon me of all my transgression, my iniquity. God, I thank you, O oh God, that you saved me. You called me out of darkness into your marvelous light. God, when my heart was... My feet was heading towards destruction and hell, Father God. You, O oh God, pull me back, O oh God, and steer me in the right path, dear God. So, Father God, as I walk, O oh God, I, my desire is to walk upright, to walk upright before you, O oh God, to please you, O oh God, to live for you, O oh God. And, Father God, when I'm stumbled, O oh God, and Father God, I thank you that you are dear to remind me oh, that I could get up, O oh God, and ask for forgiveness, O oh God, and receive forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. So, I thank you, O oh God, for forgiving me, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, for your grace and for your mercy. I thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done for me, what you're doing and what you're about to do. And even now, God, I pray, O oh God, that everyone that hear it, this, O oh God, that you will bless them, O oh God. That, God, if they do not know you as Lord and Savior, God, that they will cry out to you, O oh God, for forgiveness, O oh God. Like God, that they will repent of their sins, O oh God. And, Father God, we know, God, that you will forgive them, O oh God, once they come to you, O oh God. O oh God, with a remorseful heart, O oh God, a repenting heart, O oh God, a sincere heart, O oh God, seeking you, O oh God, 
Father God, I pray right now, God, that you just hear and answer the cry of every individual that crying out to you, O God. And Father God, remember your people, O God. Father God, remind them, dear God, that you are still there for them, dear God. Father God, if they messed up, O God, Father God, it's not for them to stay in their mess, O God, but Father God, to ask for forgiveness, O God. Because even as we see David, O God, you say he was a man after your own heart, O God. And Father God, he have done so many wrong, but God, he was the one who was remorseful of the things that he have done. Father God, when he when he was confronted, O oh God, by these by by your servant, O oh God, the prophet, O oh God, Father God, so I thank you, O oh God, Father God, we have. Oh, Paul, O oh God, who persecuted the church, O oh God. But Father God, when he had that encounter with you, O oh God, Father God, he became a changed man, Father God. Father God, we have Peter who deny you, O oh God. And Father God, even though he said he would not deny you, O oh God, many of us say we will not deny you, O oh God, but yet we have denied you, O oh God. But God, he repented, O oh God, and you forgave him, O oh God, and you used him, O oh God. And there's many more in your in the word of God, O oh God, in your Bible, O oh God, that messed up, O oh God. But Father God, they repent, O oh God and that just is showing us oh god we have not fallen too far oh god that we cannot repent oh god and that you will not forgive us dear god so father god i pray that you will forgive us of our sins oh god and that we may come to know you as lord and savior and god and you will use us for your honor and for your glory we will proclaim your praises to those who do not know you oh god father god we go forth oh god and we will speak your word oh god tell of your goodness oh god that you have done towards us dear god so continue to bless us oh god as a people O oh God. Remember this nation, O oh God, the United States, O oh God. Remember all the nations of the world, O oh God. We we'll lift them up before you, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that they will know, those who know the right thing, to do the right thing, dear God. Father God, those who, O oh God, who's adding to your word, O oh God. Father God, your word said that you, O oh God, will add to them the plague, this plague that is written in this book, dear God. So, Father God, I pray right now, O oh God, they will see, O oh God, the judgment upon their life, O oh God, when they are adding to your word or taking away for, from your word, O oh God, because you said that God, you will take their name from the, oh God, the, the, the tree of life, oh God, the book of life, dear God. So Father God, help them to realize, oh God, we are not to add anything to your word or to add or take anything from your word, oh God, because your word is your word, oh God, and your word is banned. So Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, oh God, for your correction. I thank you, oh God, for your leading of your Holy Spirit. May you continue to touch, heal, and deliver, oh God. Remember those who are sick, oh God. Father God, whatever illness that they may be battling, Father God, pray, O oh God, right now that your Holy Spirit will just hover above them, Father God. Heal right now, God, mind, body, and spirit, O oh God. God, we come against cancer. We come against arthritis. We come against Alzheimer's, oh God. We come against diabetes. We come against high blood pressure, oh God. We come against every form of sickness, oh God. COVID, oh God. Monkeypox, oh God. And whatever the disease that may be upon the land, Father God. Father God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit go forth, oh God. Father God, your word says, my people who are called by my name will just humble themselves, oh God. Turn from their wicked ways, oh God. And Father God, seek your face, O God. Father God, you will hear from heaven and heal your land, O God. Father God, you are speaking to those who say that they are Christian, O God. For us to turn to you, O God. Turn from our wicked ways, O God. And turn back to you, O God. And with a repenting heart, O God. And you will hear us when we cry out to you, O God. And you will heal our land, Father God. So have your way, I pray, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.